Welcome back to Catalyst University. My name is Kevin Tokoff. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel for future videos and notifications. In this video, we're going to discuss a really cool topic, and that's the mechanism of how you crack or pop your joints. So let's get into the topic. Yeah. So many of you probably pop your joints for stress relief. Some people hate it, some people like it, but how exactly does it work? Turns out that it's going to work on the very, very small microscopic scale, really on the molecular level if we really get down to it, which we will. And all of this process is going to occur inside a joint capsule of what's called a synovial joint. Now these are the joints of the body that bend. Now most of the time when we think about joints, we think of joints that bend, but there are some that don't. But here we're going to consider the ones that do bend, such as the elbow joint. The elbow joint actually can pop in some people. I can actually do that myself. But most common are going to be obviously the finger joints, the toes, uh, also the shoulder, the back, and the neck. Those are the most common. And those joints are going to have what's called a joint capsule. And the joint capsule is surrounded by this sort of maroon membrane on either side called the synovial membrane. And the synovial membrane contains what's called synovial fluid, which is just a fluid that's going to bathe and sort of uh, protect and provide nutrients to uh, the bones and the articular cartilage here that are on the surface of each of the bones in the articulating joint. But the whole point is that the synovial fluid actually um, if we blow it up, this area right here is actually going to contain many soluble gases. Okay, all of these molecules, these are just examples, but the four primary ones are actually molecules dissolved in the fluid, which is water-based, but they're in the gaseous state. Most of the molecules that we talk about being dissolved in a bodily fluid are in the aqueous state. These are actually still in the gaseous state, and that's going to play a role here. So some of the examples of gases would be oxygen gas, nitrogen gas, carbon dioxide or CO2, and then NO, which is nitric oxide. And so over time, gases are going to build up inside the joint. The act of popping actually causes these gases, these molecules of gas, individual molecules to come out of solution, meaning they're momentarily insolubilized. So they come out of solution, and when they come out, they leave a space a physical space where they just occupied. Remember, these are not dissolved in an aqueous manner. They're dissolved as a gas. And so the areas that they leave essentially create what's called a cavitation bubble. Okay, This cavitation bubble, it's an actual bubble, but there's a vacuum inside the bubble. So this white space inside the sort of blue bubble is a vacuum. There's nothing in there, like kind of like space. It's a vacuum. Now, this cavitation bubble does not last very long. Okay, The actual sound that you get for popping the joints is actually caused by implosion of these cavitation bubbles. Okay, So the cavitation bubbles will actually implode in on themselves, and you get this popping sound. So actually, the implosion is actually the cause of the sound of cracking or popping your joints. Now, after you pop the joints, there's no gas in here left. And what you probably know if you pop your joints is that you can't actually pop them for another usually 20 to 30 minutes after you do the initial pop. That's because you have to have time to let these gases build back up into the joint. And so this is what's called the refractory period, and normally it's going to last around 20 minutes, and some people it can last more. And that's the time it takes for this empty, uh, really, well, it's synovial fluid that's devoid of gases. It's the time it takes it to refill with these same gases as before that we saw up here in the first step. And once this refractory period's over with, then you can pop your joints again. Okay? And so that is the mechanism by which you crack or pop your joints. It's actually not bones rubbing against bones. There's no evidence that it will actually cause arthritis. That's an old wives tale. But what it actually is, is the creation of cavitation bubbles by the removal of these gases out of solution, and then the resulting implosion of the cavitation bubbles essentially pop. And then that's the cracking of the joints. So hopefully this video made sense to you and gave you some good understanding of what actually cracking and popping your joints is. So please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. Thank you.